they automatically refer to, this was my Zippy doing that. Oh, Zippy didn't take care well today. In our everyday life, we relate to comic figures and we talk about them. So why shouldn't we use these guys to, to also talk in the adult world about epilepsy? Hello again, fabulous humans. Today, we are talking to the fun director of the Pediatric Epilepsy Programme at Alberta Children's Hospital, Canada, Julia Jacobs. Julia is leading the Knowledge to Empower project, which features the characters, or the excited brains, Zippy and Zaffy. It's all a brilliant, fun, educational way of teaching children and schools about epilepsy. From, and we were talking people from around the world. And it isn't scary, but it's actually interesting and empowering for children to learn. Stay tuned. And if you'd like to learn more about epilepsy and epilepsy research each and every week, do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Julia. Could you please tell everybody a bit about yourself? Thank you very much, Tori, for having me. I'm so excited to share my story with you. Um, I am currently the director of the Pediatric Epilepsy Program in Calgary, um, and that's a big uh, pre-surgical program where we treat most of the surgical cases in Western Canada, actually. And for my, my specialization for the past 15 years has actually been to work with children, prepare them for going for surgery or evaluating whether they are surgical candidates, but also treating children with refractory epilepsies with new medical treatments, for example. And um, I also have a big research interest. I know that you have been chatting in the past on a research podcast with Christos, and he talked about these high frequency oscillations. They have been the topic of my excitement for the last 10 years as well. Um, I was originally trained in Montreal to read and analyze them and then um, went back to Germany, which is my home country, to work a lot on high frequency oscillations. Well, what exactly are you doing right now? So you're, you're in Canada right now. Um, and how are you applying your previous knowledge to your current project? Tell us about that. I've been coming to Canada because I really wanted to grow our epilepsy program here. And it's an exciting opportunity because at the Alberta Children's, we see around 3000 kids a, a, a year with epilepsy and many of them have very severe seizures. Um, I think the thing we are going to talk a little bit more to, today about is a bit, if you wanna say my spare time project or what I got really fascinated about recently. Um, and that came up a little bit because I've been, of course, working with a lot of families and not all of these families um, we can fix their problem. We will never have every single child being seizure free. Um, also, many of the families are just at the beginning of their journey. They had their first seizures and I feel they are really devastated about it. And um, I, what I felt is that knowledge makes really a big difference about how people perceive their own epilepsy or how families perceive the epilepsy of their children. Um, and I've actually worked with the group in Germany together, like the one I used to work for in Freiburg. Um, and what we did was we offered an early educational interventions to families who had their first seizure. And it was actually a randomized controlled trial where 50% of the families got the general standard care and the other 50% got like early teaching. And it was shocking to me to see that the, the big effect that this minimal intervention had. So we could show that one year after the first seizure, independent on, on whether the kids got epilepsy or they just stayed with their first seizure, the anxiety in the families who had not received any intervention early on was significantly higher than the anxiety in the families who had the training. And of course, this comes down to there's many kids who have seizures, as we know, and many of them only have a single seizure in their life. They never go on to have epilepsy. Um, but so it's very difficult to give an individualized teaching to all of them. Right. And I guess it's a positive side effect of the pandemic, which gave me the certainty that we can do this virtually. Because my own son, who's nine now, when he started homeschooling because of the pandemic, he really started engaging into online teaching and he loved it. And I realized if you do this well, this can be really 
exciting for everyone and it can it's not just you know going on another zoom it can really have a teaching content mm -hmm. and I think where the new program came alive which we call knowledge to empower and it's aimed to have little snippets and videos um, to teach families and but this which are affected by epilepsy or seizures but actually also maybe teachers or other children who've not been exposed to epilepsy yet about epilepsy. That's brilliant because the, I mean that just uh, shows a really important thing is that the epilepsies don't solely affect people with a diagnosis or a person that might have had one seat. They affect kind of like as cheesy as it is, but the world and everybody that interacts really with the person with the diagnosis. And I can say as, as a little, little child, um, nobody spoke about epilepsy. Well, apart from me sometimes. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is my dodgy brain. But Again, I guess I was lucky that I could do that because I had a little understanding of what, what it actually was, that it wasn't me, that it was my brain being shifty and OTT and this would happen. Um, but I guess I was lucky to be able to look at it from that perspective. And I, but I know heaps and heaps of kids can't. And as your study shown, that is what empowers the individual and the family to have a better understanding of it. And also, I like what you say about the online learning, because you know when you go and see your doc or your nurse or any clinician of any kind, especially about, you know, well, something like epilepsy, you can be really stressed in the meeting, in the appointment, and it can be really hard to remember things. And so to have something online, which you can go back to and re-watch or re-listen, could be really powerful, really useful for us. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And I think what you've mentioned to say, like, you know, how do you talk about this as an affected child? There are some training programs in German, which I was trained on when I was a resident. Um, and what I always found very empowering is that all of these programs provide a language for the kids and the parents to talk about epilepsy. So you then can use the same synonyms, like let's say, you know, do you remember the comparison to what a threshold is? Or like, you know, you can refer to the, this if something happens. And our program is actually built on uh, two neuron characters, one of them being more the clumsy one, if you want to say, who actually causes the epilepsy and the other one, his best friend who takes care of them. I brought you a picture. So this mm -hmm. is Zippy and Zappy. Um, <laughs> the right yellow one is the one who has epilepsy. And um, what I think is very powerful already now when I chat with kids about this is that they automatically refer to, this was my Zippy doing that. Oh, Zappy didn't take care well today. So, you know, they get a language with their family to talk about these things, which is kids friendly, um, but parents can still relate to it. You know, on, in our everyday life, we relate to comic figures and we talk about them. So why shouldn't we use these guys to to also talk in the adult world about epilepsy. And they actually came alive, as you can see, there are two superheroes. They have their little batteries, which shows how well they feel, but they were chosen by the families and the kids of our program. So we had little oh. firefighters and different types of superheroes, and they really like this one best. So I hope that people can relate to them similar, like people are crazy about Paw Patrol, you know, that's the plan. They, <laughs> they can really enjoy these characters. So what are the things on their heads? Are those like dendrites coming out of their heads? What are the... Yes, exactly. That's what we... So they have their little dendrites coming up here and then, yeah, well, of course they don't look like a perfect neuron, but I think you can relate to them and yeah. they have hero capes, so... Yeah, and then yeah, you just like their dendrites, you could use like a lot of hairspray or something, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's like sticking right out. And I totally get um, the value of that. So could you just tell people just a little bit more about um, how the project is benefiting the mums and dads as well, uh, like when it comes to anxiety? And because we know that anxiety of parents is easily recognized by the children too, you know, whether the parents so, realize so, it or not. So I think there's two ways. First of all, we want to really make people understand there's like a, what we call a first seizure box of videos okay. and they are going to they are all on the platform and they there will be we are currently working on that interactive sessions in that as well so for example little escape rooms where you can test your knowledge on epilepsy and things like that but at this point um what we want to create is a place where the 
family gets a, like what I tell them in the situation. And as you said, they're very stressed. They can sit down at home again and watch it again. So there is a seizure aid video. So it just explains to you what to do in a seizure. But there's also a video which explains to you, for example, why different brain regions might cause different mm -hmm. types of seizures and you know why some people have visual symptoms and other people have auditory symptoms or whatever is happening. So there is a, a broad base of knowledge. There's also one video which is just called You Are Not Alone to say Aww. like, it, kids are out there who have epilepsy um, and then the next uh, package is a package which gives you more information about hands-on tools when you have epilepsy so for example very simple um, video about how do I work if my kid doesn't take or keep his medication you know the typical things which freaks families out like my kid has been vomiting in the morning what am I going to do do I give the medication again or not like or my kid is refusing the medications what tricks might there be to get the medication in anyway so there is like more practicals there's also some information about how we can use EEG to record the activity of Zippy and Zappy so you know, <laughs> it's like it's a broad-based kind of thing um the what I really enjoy about what we, what we have created is that it what it's it's based on a on whiteboard videos. So these are little painted, relatively simple videos, and they allow us to adjust the contents relatively easily. So you can, for example, have an, a video script and then you can translate it to Spanish without even having to change the video. Right. Or you can, you know, adjust. <clears throat> A cultural context or something like that so that's really what i what we hope will be the future technology i'm not sure how how well we are performing we are on a steep learning curve because as you learned that's not my primary profession but i really enjoy the creativity about it i i, you know, I, I get like when you are have been more of an academic person or, or solely in medicine and then you have to get all creative and you're like using colorful things and different ways of communication it's like another world isn't it but it's really fun and challenging. Yes, fun. and I think it, it's really fun. Like everyone who has been talking to me about this has been saying, oh, I can see how excited you are about this. <laughs> but also what I really enjoy is that I'm working for 15 years now trying to improve epilepsy surgery, trying to improve new treatments. And there have been a lot of advantages. But I think sometimes the oversee the little things we can do or the more simple things we can do to really make a difference in quality of life. And I, I really feel this kind of teaching um, can make this little difference, you know, without inventing the big drug and having millions of dollars to do a randomized controlled trial. Um, so I enjoy doing both and having this opportunity to go ahead with this right now. It has just been fun and creative. And I also have to give credit. I have an incredibly engaged research assistant Paula who does all the paintings for all these little neurons so she loves it too so I think we just teamed up on this and got mm -hmm. it all. and you've also got some great people on your team when it comes to language skills haven't you like translating it into yeah yes exactly I mean like I I my my own family is a bit crazy language wise <laughs> Can speak French. I'm a German speaker, as you can hear, and then we speak English all together. So we have three languages there, but we also have people with a Mandarin background, a Spanish background um, in our teams. So we and we are connecting with people worldwide right now because we really hope that we can bring this out in other languages. Well, if anybody listening or watching knows, um, well, if you uh, know a, a different uh, language or dialect and you would like to help translate, please just get in contact. Um, if anybody wants to get in touch with you or learn more, what should they do? Well, we have started a little bit of social media on what's called Ed Excited Brains. So you can <laughs> us there, or we will put an email uh, down under this video I understood where you can write to us. Um, I think for the videos itself, uh, and when it comes to family and parents, we are currently hoping that we will launch the first complete set of videos around June. And then it will be a platform where families actually can sign up and then tell us what they want to learn about. Um, we want to have a little bit, make sure that not everyone can watch every video openly, just because I don't want to frighten someone with a first seizure watching mm. it. 
Mm. or something like that. So we will be taking care of a bit like of saying this is the first seizure portion. That's what we open up for you now. Um, but everyone can come in contact and have a look at our videos for sure. Everybody from any continent shall be able to access it. Fingers crossed. I see. Well, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, like my vision government. would be that in some years from now, you can watch this on your mobile, whether you're sitting somewhere in Africa or India or the US and just learn a little bit about it. And, you know, I also really believe in the next generation that we can teach this to school kids and give them a language to talk about it and destigmatize epilepsy because this is really still a topic. I can't like, you know, um, when you talk to patients, it's definitely not something which is normal for everyone and it should be so because it's so common. Yeah, we talk about diabetes, we talk about all illnesses, but we've got to talk about dodgy brain activity as well, which can affect any any child or any adult. So fab <laughs> fabulous. Thank you so much for joining us, Julia. This is really fun. And um, we look forward to an update in a few months time, no doubt. Yeah, thank you very much for having me, Tori.